Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths. Custom Faction Design, or Weapons for said Custom Faction. So, I've been working off-screen a little bit, uh, continuing to design and refine uh, the custom faction that I've been working on, just pretty much for fun. And, well, this video is about what I've come up with, and just, well, progress on it so far. There's no set goal with this, really. I'm just making it mostly for giggles and for your viewing pleasure, since uh, last time people seemed to really like what I came up with, so here it is. And so it's more crams, and it's uh, more simple weapons. No APS uh, this time, no advanced cancer, because uh, any advanced cannon I design now will just have to be updated in weeks to come anyway, so I'm gonna just uh, save myself some some time and not uh, make any of those just yet, but I will be making more of those, and especially uh, once the changes do hit, I'll be making a whole bunch of them uh, to the best of my ability to show off uh, what you can do with the new advanced cannon changes. So, but for now, we've got uh, these three uh, cram systems right here, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to get creative, so rather than having things be ultra efficient, because uh, just being uh, going meta and being like super efficient uh, with faction craft, it's uh, well, for one thing, it's not usually fun to fight against, and it's just, it's not as interesting. So, but, like, one of the things I love about uh, the factions in From the Depths already, like the NATO campaign in particular, is that uh, most of the craft which are not godly have deliberate flaws in them, and you actually learn a lot by kind of uh, not worrying about just uh, making your craft perfect and just having fun. Like, I highly recommend that. Like, I know there are people who do that, just they get better at this game so much more quickly. So in any case, enough waffling here is uh, the first gun. So this is uh, the result of me having a sudden urge one day to make a gun with a recoil chamber on top of it. That's what this is meant to look like, this uh, extra barrel on top here. And there is, there are no recoil chambers in From the Depths for either cram or advanced cannons, but it looks really cool, at least I think so, even like just heavy barrels on top there. And this is a, a gun mounted on not a two-axis turret, but a double turret, so it has a turret concealed in uh, one of the side ones. So if I go here and if I shrink blocks, it's a self-contained little turret, local weapon controller right here. Heavy armor surrounding it. Uh, usual story is that try not to make heavy armor either covered or as or just as invisible as I can. Not always feasible if you want to keep things small. But yeah, so these side mounts here. Heavy armor support right there, and the turret is in the left side of the gun, if you're looking at it from the back. So here's that 360 turret, it's attached to this, which we made separately. Uh, not ideal cram tetris in here, because I wanted to keep this as small as possible. And it's not well armored, this is just covered in wood, and it even has gauge increases poking out the top, because I just decided to up the gauge a little bit. Set to 20 seconds between shots, has this uh, fake recoil chamber up here. And the great thing that about making advanced, well not for advanced cannons, sorry, cram cannons this way, is that if you mount them on a double turret like this, or a two axis turret, which normally isn't feasible for a cram cannon because you need to make them reasonably bulky to jam all the pellets and autoloaders in there, you can, like, use pretty much nothing but regular barrels, which is uh, terrible for uh, their firing arc for both elevation and uh, azimuth. It's fantastic for muzzle velocity, and it's really good for accuracy. This is, I think, possibly the most accurate cram cannon I've ever created. It is thrown off a little bit by the fact that uh, turrets on turrets are a little, just seem to be a little bit wonky with their aim. But that's that's acceptable. This thing, uh, super accurate little cram gun, and uh, basically, it's just I like I like how it looks like World War II. Uh, era artillery or an anti-aircraft gun like it's not a great idea for this because if this bit gets hit it dies and it'll chain react in here because it has uh, high explosive pellets all lined up next to them three rows of them in fact uh, one hit that's all she wrote but hey it's artillery it's not meant to be shot at 
Yeah, about 15, 85 millimeters. Let's uh, have this uh, thing shoot at something. So it's on channel one. Kaboom, that's fully crammed. So it is going to do damage aplenty. That missed, that missed, but it uh, has a time fuse and it did that. 20 second uh, cram time, just because. So because I find like, uh, I could stick it back to 13, but I like 20. Like 20, uh, one shot every 20 seconds for crams is, puts it at a pretty realistic uh, rate of fire. Uh, for big naval guns, and it's just it feel it feels right. It's a good compromise. I know some people get driven absolutely bonkers by how slow that is, and that's because they're used to advanced cannons firing very very quickly indeed. So, okay, that's enough of that. That's that guy taken care of. Okay, so moving on. So, uh, racking my brain a little bit uh, to come up with something something else that's a. Uh, uh, well, I guess not fresh and interesting, but at least somewhat uh, intriguing. I remembered something that those of you who have uh, been on the From the Depth scene for a little while might remember Ireland Gaming, who is a fantastic uh, content creator and uh, From the Depths uh, player who made really good tutorials and just really good playthroughs and just splendid content on this game. Unfortunately, he stopped making content for this game a uh, long time ago. I should uh, I should post a link to his uh, channel. He doesn't update it anymore, but this like it's good for an archive binge, and uh, it's also a great way to see just how the game has changed in the time since uh, he was uh, busy on YouTube in the time uh, since. And one of the things he came up with, or one of the things he showed off on his channel, is a uh, uh, cannon carousels. So what that is is if we go in here, and you know, hide blocks, uh, you'll see that this is a cram system that is mounted not on a turret, it's mounted on a spin block. And you might have noticed uh, while I was panning the camera around that when the Marauder was spawned in, uh, this started spinning. That's because there's ACPs over here. If there's no enemy within uh, 5,000 meters, uh, the spin block does not spin. If there is, it spins about 0.3 degrees per second. So it spins quite slowly. And it's got uh, not ideal cram Tetris, so this is my uh, a bog standard lazy Tetris. So we're in here, and yeah, so it's got this uh, kind of uh, close close connector uh, Tetris right here that is not super efficient, but it is uh, reasonably simple to jam uh, more crams into a smaller space. Uh, you can do it with a uh, actual proper Tetris, which is kind of that, I don't know, that diamond shape. But uh, that's a lot harder, takes a lot longer, and I'm not the mood. I do this for fun. And so these are four separate uh, columns of connectors, and each one of them has their own uh, firing piece on it, all arranged in this kind of a uh, spirally type thing. And each one has their own local weapon controller, and this is a one of those moments I had where it's like, oh my god, I'm accidentally a genius, because it means that you arrange local weapon controllers and firing pieces like this, it means that each local weapon controller is controlling two firing pieces, and that's just good for redundancy. And doing it this way means that you can just uh, connect all of these guys uh, together to one wireless receiver, which probably is a, a step backwards for redundancy, but it does make it nice and compact and nice and simple, and I love it. And these guns are nothing to write home about, by the way. They're uh, 944 millimeters. They are not very accurate. 0 0.83 in accuracy is pretty terrible. Like, for for anything, but especially for a cram cannon, simply because their shots are so slow. 123 meters per second. But uh, this is this is a fun gun. This will probably go on an easy to regular class, class vessel, assuming I bother with uh, categories like that. And, yeah, so this thing is, this thing is just a hoot. So if we spawn in our friend the Marauder again, you'll notice that it starts spinning, and it spins just fast enough that when you uh, activate the guns, it fires, and then the next one fires, and then the next one fires, and so it's just a nice, steady... I haven't actually counted the RPM of this little system uh, before, but uh, minimum uh, cram time is about every 10 seconds, but 
If we go here, we'll see that. Oh, darn it. I wasn't counting fast enough. Okay, so it has been 16 seconds. So this thing crams, well, for about uh, 20 seconds. So it's uh, four shots per 20 seconds, which is like... Uh, 12 shots per minute, which for a cram system is pretty good, especially one this bad. So it's like, this is a... Something like this is about the closest you can get to a rapid-fire uh, cram cannon. Uh, if you make this, I should probably make another version of this that's a bit bigger and has even more guns on it, but yeah. And the satellite dish on top is simply because there's a flat space there, and I couldn't think of anything else to do with it. And it also looks a little bit like a funky wooden UFO. So yeah, uh, that's that thing, and that is hilarious and cool, and I like it. Um, all right, all right, wrong button, wrong button. And so then there's this thing that uh, you've probably been wondering about since the start of this episode. This is an experiment, and this came from uh, the fevered idea in my brain that, like, hang on, uh, it kind of bums me out sometimes that you can't get cram barrels right up next to each other. And then I realized you can if you're willing to make severe compromises on everything sensible in a cram cannon. So, uh, those of you who know your cram Tetris, uh, you might want to brace yourselves because this is a... Uh, I don't know. This is either genius or madness or a combination of the two. So what we have in here... In fact, you know what will be a really good idea is if I take a slice of this, like a cake, and... I do something like this. So width is 13, length is 13. No, it's bigger than that. Woo! It's a big thing. It's a very big thing. So. Do, do, do. So here we go. Here we've got a nice little pancake slice of what the heck is going on in there. And thankfully, I colored it, so. This is uh, already using the less efficient, easy Tetris that I've uh, come to do quite often. It's because, I don't know, it's really brainless. And that is its only real redeeming quality. But uh, each color is a separate cram system. So you see these ones on the end? Uh, None of these guns have the same uh, packing rate. Well, yeah, none of them have the same packing rate. They all have the same fire rate because they all have the, exactly the same amount of ammunition. But absolutely none of them uh, have the same amount of darker. These are three in the middle. They have the most. Uh, these two have, l have less. And these have hardly any. This is going purely for cool points and style points. So the arrangement within there... You have the column up here, and then they're connected uh, all on top, so something like this. Do, 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 do. And uh, the great thing about uh, cram connectors is that diagonally they do not connect, just like everything in this game. So it means that you can have a firing system, well, I'll show you. A firing system right here, it does not connect to these. So this is pretty much the only way that you can have uh, cram cans right next to each other. Well, the firing pieces anyway, with system, separate systems. And if you want them right next to each other, so the same length of barrel and everything, what you do is this. Uh, cram cannons can connect to connectors from the back. So what you do is place this, uh, shift click replace, Look at that! These things are all in a row. And that's pretty much exactly what I've done up here. And it's the usual armor setup for all of these things, by the way. It's heavy armor uh, with wood layered over the top of it. Uh, which, uh, the more and more I combat test that, the more I realize that it's <laughs> not actually a good armor scheme at all. Unless you want to just spam repair bots, because uh, it just it's just not good. The wood gets blown off immediately. And then anything that can crack the heavy armor will just crack it immediately, so... Yeah, it's uh, not great, but it is hilariously fun to watch. And so this will definitely be kind of the starting faction. Uh, be quite a bit harder than the uh, Deepwater Guard, uh, for comparison. But, yeah, it's just still, they'll be pretty easy to beat if you know what you're doing. And even if you don't know, like, uh, you'll figure it out with uh, without too much difficulty. 
basically if you can counter big cram cannons and uh, yeah and high explosive and then you should be fine so these are these are not maximum gauge shells because uh, the gauge tetris in here is pretty nightmarish already you'll notice oh jeez it's a, it's it is a it was a long and arduous uh, well, it wasn't that arduous, but it was time-consuming just to get every one of these guns the same gauge and not have them touch each other. Like, gauge uh, corners are fantastic for this, because on just this one side, uh, where they do not... Well, these two sides, actually. That's one side, two side. Where they do not connect to anything, that is so useful in making very compact uh, cram cannons. And this particular pattern, so you've got two cram cannons next to each other as part of the turret, you can just alternate these little uh, gauge corners and just ensure that you have separate systems that aren't uh, messing with each other. Same over here, same over here. And inside, like, you'll notice that uh, here and there I've had to stick extra ones like above uh, in the turret cap itself. Uh, that is unavoidable simply because uh, these uh, three guns in the middle, they had no spare room. So I needed to stick these up here. And you've got this kind of uh, internal mohawk of uh, gauge increases right here. And you'll also notice that uh, the local weapon controllers that are all controlling these, they all have their own failsafes obviously, but uh, they're sharing wireless receivers, which means that this thing has slightly less redundancy uh, than a properly designed thing. And uh, I should mention as well that in case you're wondering why I have these local weapon controllers here up in the turret itself, uh, the AI, to the best of my knowledge, still uh, cannot aim different uh, weapon systems on that independently, especially if uh, Especially if they have different muzzle velocities and different accuracies and different uh, ways of aiming. So, say this barrel over here gets damaged and it gets shortened, which will reduce uh, the muzzle velocity of the shell. Uh, that will either screw up the aiming for every other gun, or it will just mean the uh, local weapon controller on the turret cannot compensate for that, and this gun will therefore always miss. And having extra weapon controllers controlling uh, the firing pieces themselves is one of the best ways to uh, what do you call it uh, to counter that to stop that from being an issue and I learned that from watching tournaments so uh, even if you don't participate in tournaments yourselves uh, watching them is pretty good actually for uh, improving your FTD skills but enough of that you want to see this thing fire don't you so where's our friend the Marauder So this thing is a little ridiculous uh, when it fires, because that is 11, well these are fully crammed simply because they've been sitting so long, which uh, means they tend to disintegrate uh, things they hit. Yeah, that Marauder is uh, not there anymore. Blown in two. That is so fun. And it is worth the wait as well, because uh, these guns uh, because, and this is one of the problems with having so many uh, separate cram systems on one turret, it's hard to get enough ammunition for all of them so that, not only so they actually have a decent rate of fire, but also so they have enough stored ammunition that they don't slow down completely, or stop, uh, after firing for a while, because you'll see, uh, each one of these guns has 1000 ammunition, but each cell uses 171 ammunition. If you just go by the regular reload time of 16.71 seconds, uh, you're gonna run out of ammo and the firing rate will slow down like way, way too much after a little while. So, that is why you uh, calculate the, the firing rate of a cram uh, by going by... Basically, it's a simple. It's just the, the amount of ammo used per shot divided by uh, the number of ammo boxes, because each ammo box regenerates one ammo per second. And so 171 divided by 5 uh, gets you, well, I hope it does, like I made it, did this massive time ago, gets you about 34.2. So that is that is the rate of fire. So it fires once every 34.2 seconds. That is a long time, which is one of the reasons why these uh, guns aren't exactly feasible. Well, they're feasible, they're just not practical. Like, a practical cram does not look like this, for the most part. 
You could, you could fix that uh, by making it even taller, but this thing is already kind of tall, and I don't want to make it any taller than it needs to be, so here we have it. Also, I like how it spits out uh, 11 quite heavily crammed shells uh, after that time. Let's have it fire at the mortar again, because that was, that was ridiculously fun. You are going to blow the face off. Oh hey, that didn't kill it in one shot. But uh, the Marauder does not have a front anymore. And some sometimes that happens with a random block uh, aim. And so we're going to wait a long time. Well, actually not that long, about 10 seconds now. dum de dum de do but see, this one at the end is already doing like almost 10,000 explosive damage. The ones in the middle are ridiculous. Like, they're doing 22,000 explosive damage. And that's it. Yep, gone. Just for the way they vaporize things. So, uh, this is probably going to go on a godly class uh, craft, uh, or a fortress or something like that. So, similar to the other massive silly one I did. So, that's that one. And, uh... Here we have some others, which I can't see on the frigging thing. There we go. So, let's turn everything off. Actually, let us actually do this and this and... No, dang it. This! Okay. So here is where we've got some simple weapons. So, simple weapons for this faction, trying to make them cute and interesting is a little difficult because uh, there's only so many ways, because simple weapons are less customizable, there's only so much you can do with them. But here's uh, my attempt at it. So what you have here is three, there's basically three almost identical turrets. These two are in fact are almost exactly identical apart from the uh, simple weapons strapped on them. And here is another cannon carousel that we'll get to in one second. So, these ones right here, this is a, again, a turret on a turret. It is, darn it, it is a little uh, 360 turret with attached weapon controller. Uh, nice and exposed so that uh, uh, heat and hash will ruin this thing's life when it goes on the ship. And then it has a little elevation turret right there in the front. And the rest of it is basically decoration. So, if we are here, this is all... So these are just the the assault cannons, the new simple weapon assault cannons. These things are ridiculously fun and they're pretty ammo efficient, but they do bugger all damage really. So if you look at the damage for them, per uh, kinetic damage per shot is 220, armor piercing 4. That is not a lot in practice, despite the sheer volume of shells that these things fire. So if we spawn in our friend the Marauder, are we within range here? Yeah, so. There we go, so it really spits out a lot of lead. But that lead doesn't do a hell of a lot. It's uh, basically only good for shooting at wooden targets. And anything else is uh, a little bit out of its league. But it's just its just so fun. Look, Just look at how many bullets that is. That's so, so satisfying. Little animations. I really do love the new simple weapons. They're such fun. I have such a hoot playing with them. But any case, so that's that one. And this one over here, exactly the same construction, except it has these 60mm water cannons. Which, uh, in practice, they do a lot more damage, less ammo efficient, because uh, their uh, their magazines are much, much smaller. So, here. So you should be seeing blocks fly off a lot more, because they do... Those shells do... I think about twice as much kinetic damage per shot. And just, it is noticeable. There's a big difference between being shot at with those 30mm guns and being shot at with these 60mm guns. It's just... Big difference. And you can see up in the right corner, like, the amount of kinetic damage we're doing right now. Not incredibly impressive. It's a step down from an 11 barrel cram cannon uh, blowing things in half, but... Uh, but it's, a, again, little fun gun, so... And then we have this one, and at this point I was uh, really scraping the barrel for creativity, because this is the 64-pounder, and it's alright, I guess. Boom. 
So, not a hell of a lot of damage and pretty lousy reload, but again, so these will probably all go on easy, uh, well, yeah, all, all of them will go on easy or maybe regular craft, yeah, to judge it by Nata's uh, difficulty curve. Because, uh, yeah, like, I don't know, simple weapons on their own uh, aren't gonna do particularly high damage. But yeah, so... That's that little thing, and then finally, you'll notice we've got another little gun carousel here. It's got 64 pounder cannons, and the Tetris is adorable. So, so we're here. So it's got, uh, again, it's got four little weapon controllers here. They're all arranged, so each local weapon controller is controlling three uh, 64 pounder guns. And again, so it's got. Uh, where is the failsafe? It doesn't actually have any failsafes on it. Why does it not have any failsafes? Huh. I guess... Why did... What? What was? That... Uh, failsafes are important, you know. I think... Okay, no, I, I know why. It's because, uh... It's because they constantly rotate and the f uh, field of fire for these guns is so low anyway. That you, sh you could just position them in a way that hopefully they shouldn't shoot at anything important. That's my excuse, I'm sticking to it. It also has a little radar on top. Uh, oh yeah, the artillery gun over there uh, does not have radars on it. Those are mimics, but just so you know. So, number four, similar story. It's just, as it goes around, they fire. Boop! And... Boop! And for some reason, they seem to do more damage than the other one. Although occasionally they don't fire, and that makes me sad. So it's just here, rotate around, rotate around. Dang it, why is this... Mm. I think it's because it's random block selection, and they can't always reach the block they want to aim for. Which is a little bit annoying. Guys... Maybe they're rotating too fast. Nope, that's not it. Why are you not firing, we? What? That's weird. Wait, wait, wait. Let's track this one. Because this one didn't fire. I want to see if uh, it's consistent. Are you going to fire now? You are going to fire. God damn it. Okay. Well, so that's the simple weapons, and, uh... Actually... I want to demonstrate a little... Uh, just a little experiment I did. And, uh, that is I gave a Marauder a hat. So... I just realized that I should do all the uh, craft that I... The actual craft. I should save it to the end, but... You know what? I don't even mind. So... This is a version of that cannon carousel with the heavy armor stripped off it, and I... Yeah. This Marauder has a hat. Like, I didn't have any excuse for doing this. I just decided, you know what? A Marauder really needs a hat. I just wanted to test this uh, on something. Jeez. Sooty, you do not look great on that flag, I have to say. And with that lighting. So, go here. Kalmar. And so, as you can see, it works uh, reasonably delightfully. On top of here, on top of this marauder. Just orbiting up here. Now, by the way, a turret is 9 times out of 10 more efficient than this. But this is just fun and cool. And I've helped make this marauder about... I don't know. Maybe 1% uh, more effective than it was? Oh, come on, cannons. you got a fire, man. Why are you not firing? I think they can't depress enough. My cannons aren't depressed enough. That is unfortunate. Oh well. That's annoying. I need to work on that, clearly. Okay. You go away and... You... Go away. Way over there, and where is the last 
Fortress, there it is. I hate how I can't see anything. That's probably my fault. I should change this to an easier to see color. So the last uh, little uh, cannon fortress we have here, uh, I haven't finished it yet. The theme I was running for here is guns on guns, because I thought like, okay, so we've got guns, and we've got different kinds of guns, so naturally we need to put guns on our guns. So, this is a pretty boring little cram cannon. Uh, nothing to write home about. It's not particularly accurate. It's got, well, it doesn't have enough uh, stuff inside it to really have a great cram shell, so this is just uh, the test. It does have that kind of uh, heavy armor uh, wood scheme that some that kind of works and also doesn't. But it also has a little AA gun on top of it that is controlled by a separate AI. So in case you want to do this yourself and you don't know how, the way you do this is just in the turret cap you have a se separate weapon controller that's nowhere near uh, the actual firing piece of the main weapon. And you just have that set to a separate AI with a different target prioritization and different uh, aiming settings of the detection menu. So that's this. So you see the main from AA4, well, let's get to AA2, is set to the bearing and the range time is down a little bit. And just so it can compensate for things bouncing around a bit more. And the main one is just standard detection settings because that does the trick for me. And what that means is... Okay, so where is it? So we can do that. And we're going to spawn in a Marauder. And then we're going to spawn in a Duster. And then we are going to turn their weapons off. And then we are going to... So you'll notice... Hopefully... That, uh, um, is it doing it? The cram cannon is aiming for the Marauder. The AA gun should be aiming for the Duster. But I guess the Duster isn't close enough yet. It'll switch targets soon, I hope. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. There we go. So, now we've got the AA gun shooting for the Duster, as it should be. We've got the cram cannon shooting at the Marauder. And it's all really good. I freaking love these guns. They're really good at their job. And this little guy is mounted on a turret just for a bit of extra traverse speed. And bang! The dust is down. And the Marauder is still there. Being shot at. So, this is a fun thing. And, uh, yeah. This is... I believe that's actually something uh, they used to do back in the day on battleships. There occasionally to be extra anti-aircraft guns uh, strapped on top of turrets. And this guy has a, again, not a great rate of fire, 22 seconds between shots. Uh, each shell does not do damage, but as I said, I was just kind of mucking around testing. Which is why there's a, a recoil a suppression barrel on the end. I just like how that looks. This gun doesn't actually need it. It's like when you use heavy armor, uh, to this extent, recoil isn't a problem because the whole craft is too heavy. How did you miss at this range? Jeez, the AI in this game is something else, I tell you. Let's show that again. Let's, uh, let's spawn in. What's something fat? Okay, let's spawn in... Jacob's Delight. Let's spawn in two dusters. Me. There we go, there we go, there we go. So we've got the air gun shooting at the dusters as planned. Got the grand cannon firing at the big thing. Is this a thumbnail? It might be. This might be a thumbnail right here. I took a screenshot earlier, but I think this is the new thumbnail. Jeez, I love. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I love the new simple weapons. They are actually quite, they're seriously useful. And not overpowered. What's gonna happen here? How did you miss? What is your problem, dude? What are you, did I seriously? Are you serious? Noob mistake. Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake, Borderwise. You didn't set that, did ya? didn't set the accuracy 
And here you are blaming the cram cannon, the poor innocent cram cannon, for your foolish error. That's more like it. But the Jacob's Delight is so much fun to shoot at because it's just, it's made pretty much, it's got highly explosive guns sitting all exposed on a wooden deck. It is just, it's crack up. With exposed uh, clips and autoloaders. So it's just, it's a real hoot. Come on, get it again. Shoot it again. Yes, yes, explosion. Yes! Oh, that's so fun. Ooh, good times are being had. So yeah, I believe that's it for the fortresses, and now on to the actual craft I've made. And this is probably also better thumbnail time, so I've got a wee folder now. A folder of my very own. Uh, custom faction, HI Wood and she, and let's go by date. So, date, okay, so the first thing is, what the heck? Okay, so to start off with, there's a... Uh, uh, one of my uh, people on Discord uh, submitted this and said, basically saying, like, hey, you can use this if you want, like, uh, because it's great fun. And it's a, just, it's a little PID uh, thruster hovercraft, and it's very simple. It's a front sider, it's got uh, decorative little spinny rams inside, and that was uh, submitted by Kaviki420. Thank you, Kaviki. Uh, you you kind of nailed uh, the, the, th the feel of the faction. I did modify it a little bit. I just added some uh, ERA and like uh, tweaked the backside a little bit to make it look a little bit more cool. Yeah, but apart from that, it's uh, this is pretty much uh, all his work, all their work. And yeah, in case you're wondering, no uh, uh, submissions for this uh, custom campaign or custom faction. It is it's not closed, but it's not open either. Uh, please don't uh, fling designs at me until I say. Yes, floodgates open because uh, I don't want to have to feel feel like I don't know a hundred new designs all at once. That'll be that'll be a bit much. So yeah, this thing is uh, fun. Let's spawn in the Marauder again. We're shooting Marauders a lot, but that's that's okay. So it's very simple. PID controlled. I think I think it has a breadboard in here actually. Whoops. There we go. And this thing actually has decent cram tetras. So, uh, if we go in here, four, and, or does it? It has, yes it does. So it's got three-way connections on uh, all the pellets. Lots of little things in there. Ammo's all at the back. And yeah, that's pretty good. So where is that? I'm pretty sure there's a breadboard in here somewhere. Because I can't imagine how else this thing would be flying. Nope. Oh no. No, it's just PIDs and uh, standard. Uh oh, what the? You're a little bit close there, lad. Little bit close. You're bouncing around like a freaky person. Also, I should mention as well, this faction does not have a name as of yet, and none of the craft for it do either. They don't have names. They just have kind of placeholder titles. Bouncy, 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 and kaboom. Uh, kaboom. Wow, that was a fully crammed shell right there. That was awesome. So we've got that little hover thing, and then we've got uh, random things I've been making. Most of them are quite small. This is uh, this is the closest thing to a glass cannon. This uh, fact, well, it is a glass cannon. It's made entirely of wood. It's a little uh, anti-aircraft hovercraft. And it's like, it's bucking the trend, it's that one little exception, it is extremely fragile, and all it has on top of it is this little uh, double AA gun, mounted on a... is this even mounted? It's not mounted on a turret at all. So, whoops! So we're here, it zips along, it is uh, powered by RTGs, so it's a little bit more pricey than it is. RTGs are just what I do when I'm feeling lazy, and quite frankly, Cost is not an issue for this faction because uh, they use heavy armor all the time. Like, they clearly do not care about things being cheap. So, let's swarm in our friend the duster. Bop, 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 bop. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, bang, bang. And. Bang, 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 bang. Yep, so it's a little AA hovercraft thing designed to be annoying. It dies really easily to anything that can shoot it. And ooh, the 15 beats per second, it is, uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's uh, pretty cool. 
and uh, also fleet colors have not been finalized for this so I'm just uh, my fleet colors on this thing are just placeholders for now simply because it's so it doesn't look completely boring and whoop, and whoop, and all right so we're saving that for last so next up is a small cram boat so if you remember the first video I made of this there was a tiny tiny little cram cannon uh, this is its home now this is this tiny little I don't know what class of ship this would be. Like, it looks like a tugboat. Or like a toy boat, but it's got this, uh... <laughs> it's got a 9... 1,956 millimeter cram on it. Just because. And it's got, uh... Just on the back. Whoops. Just on the back, it has a little, uh... uh decorated 60 millimeter auto cannon. Just with a little ammo clip on it. And it's got a spotlight on it. And that is a really bad AI gun. It also has a steam piping just so everything looks connected and it has actually too many detection systems. It does not need, need this many. And a little uh, thing up top here and it is basically an armored shoebox. So we have this heavy armor compartment here. It has both a PID and uh, uh, ACBs so this thing does not die easily. The only way to actually get it to sink is to take out the engine, which is this uh, rather wacky little fuel injector. And a fuel injector with uh, exhaust going out the bottom and the top. So this is a weak point in the armor because uh, there's heavy armor down here, but now then there's holes in it. So this is a, this is definitely an easy level craft. It is not particularly scary at all. It's got daddy blades as well, simply because. Uh, if you stick the ammo in the back, like uh, what this thing has, just has this tiny little ammo compartment, uh, propellers tend to get shot off. It's got three big propellers, got a rudder, rounded, lots of wood, lots of wood, lots of wood. It's got a double layer of wood down here, I'm not sure. No, it doesn't actually, my bad. Got little daddy blades, just go fast, and here's the cram cannon. Again, a crappy little fast Tetris. And yeah, so. Fun. It's got this little uh, very precarious little cockpit up there, and PID definitely help it uh, look steady. And let's have a shoot at. Do I really want to shoot at a marauder? Let's shoot at a river home instead. Because the hilarious thing about the, these little uh, heavy armor wood boats is because they are simultaneously really delicate, but they take a little while to kill because the wood gets blown off easily but uh, the heavy armor does not so that was a fully crammed little cram so as you can see right here like the wood falls off like really easily and so does the era so that's deliberate like so because <laughs> look at that it's just just i don't know the outer layers just get peeled off so easily that is not a strong frag cram Although it, it shoots back pretty well, jeez, at least against the deep water guard craft, easy deep water guard craft. And there's that little auto cannon going daga daga daga. So yeah, this uh, the <laughs> and now it's gone. Oh jeez, this craft, th this little custom faction is just—it's such fun to watch them fight. So because uh, I don't know, they they they're I don't know, they're very tanky, but at the same time not at all. And particularly the smaller craft have pretty lousy offensive capability. Which brings us uh, neatly on uh, to the next craft, and I just made this thing today. It has many guns. Five of them. So this is kind of a... I envisage this thing as kind of a river patrol boat. It's got funky wood blocks in front and in the back. Uh, multiple flags, because why not? Superstructure with a wacky ERA on it. And here is the minigun turret you would have seen before. And this thing has real trouble destroying anything because, uh, yeah, it also uses, it's using a PID, our ugly exposed props down there, probably should uh, change that, but, yeah, like, I envisage this thing as, like, a, basically a patrol boat, it's like, basically it can destroy, uh, anything that can't destroy it, so it's just, it's a hard counter to, like, sneaky craft, is what I envisage, basically, it's got, uh, so yeah, so live fire demonstration of this, uh, lots of bullets in this tiny little AA gun back here, which, uh, by the way, this thing gets destroyed almost immediately 
uh, once combat starts, simply because it's right over the ammo compartment. So yeah, this absolute river of lead uh, doesn't do a hell of a lot. Although it's actually you know, looking better than it was before. Also not very fast. This is the... This thing only goes about 20 meters, uh, 15 meters per second. I do love the shape though. It's got the kind of... Actually got a boat shape to it. Two, three, four, and... Whoops. One, two, three. Actually, let's do this. One, two, three, four. So you see the innards. This is also RTG powered because I was feeling lazy. It's got an uh, ammo compartment surrounded by heavy armor. And reinforced wood for the deck because uh, I made it too flat. So here we are. Heavy armor, heavy armor. And... Uh, Critically, it has a whole gap in the heavy armor because it stops about here. From here on out, uh, there's a gap in the heavy armor box here because it's reinforced wood down in here, and that's how it gets uh, destroyed usually. So yeah, and three and pop. So let's take you off. So yeah, whoops, multiple. Uh, just a heavy armor box filled with stuff. Long and narrow, it's a canoe, basically. And, yeah, like, I don't know, again, this is an easy crafter because this thing struggles with anything that's made of stuff tougher than wood. Mainly I just made it simply because I love to see this river of lead flying out. It's just so much fun to watch. Fire again for daddy. Fire again for daddy, yay! God, that's so much fun. Oh yeah, the, uh... Coincidence Rangefinder also a recent addition because it kind of needed that. So yeah, there's that one. And finally, and this is actually the, uh, I think the second one I made of these, is uh, the battleship, or a battleship, I guess. Which is, uh, she's a big girl. She is uh, whopping uh, 260,000 materials and almost 10,000 blocks and same armor scheme. So... You see, heavy armor box. In fact, multiple layers of heavy armor. Look, this one actually has spore liner, so this is... We're getting into expert slash godly territory because, uh... I spawned this thing against the Stull Slung. And this craft almost won, and I was very surprised by that because, uh... Wasn't supposed to. <laughs> it was not supposed to do that at all. It even has anchors on it, because I thought, you know what? Uh, this thing needs decoration. So it has decoration. It has anchors over here attached to ERA, which is not the best idea. So yeah, it does not have uh, any torpedo defense, any lambs. Or... It's got injector engines as well, so because I'm finding that uh, injector engines are very easy to make. I took such a long break from making injector engines. It's like, it's not even funny. But I'm finding that uh, a little bit easier now. It's got these weird injector tower things. So, yeah, one of the best hints I got in recent days regarding engines is, uh, with an injector engine, so if you're using fuel injectors, you want two exhausts per cylinder. So, which is, uh, very important to have, so you'll notice that each one of these cylinders is connected to two exhaust pipes. Because, uh, injector engines have a very bad habit of overheating a lot, so you do need that, and so the underside is a bit of a... Is a bit of a mishmash of uh, exhaust ports, which is a pretty funky pattern, actually. It's like from underneath that looks really cool. And so yeah, it's like it's got big cram cannons, uh, big, big, big. So this is uh, the second biggest one on that uh, fortress that I showed off in the first uh, custom faction video I did. So not fantastic guns, but at the same time not bad. They do the trick. They only got a 45 uh, degree elevation, but yeah, it's so pretty good, big hefty HE, and four of them I was going to stick an advanced cannon uh, in the rear one, so which way is this thing pointing? It's pointing that way. So this one over here was going to be an advanced cannon, but I decided, you know what, 12 crams are fun. It also has a mimicked uh, 360 camera up here, so because uh, I couldn't think what else to put there. And the actual detection is hidden in here, so if you ever wanted to keep your detection safe, or uh, safer on your superstructure, uh, you can do something like this. So it's just uh, because uh, things like laser rangefinders and visual cameras 
they're not blocked off diagonally. They're only blocked off uh, front, back, left, right. And so you can do this. And there's actually glass here as well. Glass does is rubbish for protecting anything, but it's just uh, good for stopping the odd uh, frag round from immediately taking out your cameras. So yeah, it also has uh, lots of little AA guns, which is uh, hilarious. So Captain Terry, Lieutenant Harry, Lieutenant Harry is the AA. So if we spawn in our friends the Dusters, which actually do a lot of damage to this thing. Whoop. So there they go. There the guns are firing. I could stick quad guns on them, but I just decided not to for some reason. Oh yeah, I know why. I know why I didn't. It's because the quad guns weren't added when I made this. A dir. So yeah, this is, feels very battleshipy. It's just. Uh, shooting down planes like that. They do a very good job. And uh, we've lost a huge amount of blocks somewhere. Where'd that happen? Oh, that would have been... Uh, that would have been... Uh, the thing. What thing? That would have been the, just the missiles coming in. Just came in and blew a whole chunk off. And uh, spawning this against uh, something that actually does do decent damage is a crack up, I have to say. So we're here, and... Oops, I should turn the guns back on. So, 12 big ram cannons, and it's got these dumb fire uh, missile launchers right there. Ooh, bad shot, bad shot, bad shot, bad shot. Those turrets can take a pounding, by the way. Uh, direct cram cannons to the face, they're still firing. Crossbones has been updated, by the way. It is uh, different. And, like, I have to say, I really hate that uh, one of the Crossbones AIs just ha does not have uh, a aimpoint selection card at all, so it aims for random blocks. That is infuriating, because you cannot plan for that. You basically need to have a cramproof vessel. Yeah. See, I hate that. I hate that so much. Because, like, what can you do against that? You can't do anything against that, really. Well, you can, there's plenty of things you can do, but I don't want to, because it's, like, it's not my thing, you know? Yay! Now, why are you running away? You shouldn't be doing that. You should be turning broadside. I freaking... There we go. What are you doing? Oh, we lost the bloody detection. Well, that's embarrassing. My much vaunted battleship is losing to a crossbones right now. When it costs, like, considerably more. That's annoying. That is, uh, less than kosher. Oh, well. We'll have to spawn in the rest of the fleet in order to help. So, wood gunboat. Here. Wood gunboat. And the grandma will come. Where you go, guys? Defend your battleship. The silly fleet is uh, coming to save the day. Don't shoot each other now. So yeah, that's where my custom faction is at at the moment. Uh, still have no idea where I'm going to go with this. Probably just going to keep uh, building stuff. And yeah, so thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Uh, support me on Patreon if you like, it really helps. And I will see you uh, next time in From the Depths. Farewell!